I wanted to write The Sweetest Thing because I felt that women in television and film were shown in, in, in very limited ways. I felt like women were either bitchy or they were like pathetic and needy and desperate and wanted a man. I definitely see elements of our relationship in, in, uh, in the characters in The Sweetest Thing for sure. I, I saw the, the irony in the, the facade that these women put out front and then the reality and their vulnerabilities that they had inside of them behind closed doors. So I wanted to show both of those sides. I like to just basically hold myself up in, in my office for months at a time and, and just absorb the characters, ab absorb the language that I'm going to be using and uh, just shut myself out from the rest of the world and, and let the characters talk to me. I wake up uh, around 8 o'clock, write up uh, maybe 10 pages before lunchtime, um, and then I'll sit down, write it about another 10 pages. I like to kind of take on the characters, so I'll, you might find me like acting each character out. I like to use different voices, that helps me. Um, I lower my voice when I write men's characters. Hello, yes, how are you? <laughs> I like to experience real life characters. <laughs> you might find me walking through alleys at nighttime. When I see those people who are deprived, it gives me inspiration and makes me work harder at, at my craft. I definitely see huge aspects of all of our personalities from the girls in The Sweetest Thing. Um... <sighs> Nancy, here are the pages you wanted me to write. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Not bad. You know something, though? <laughs> this is my script. It's gonna have my name on it. Um, so it, it seems you've used a lot of big words, which is good, but I, I don't think that the public will understand a lot of these words, so you might want to dumb it down a little bit, okay? Again? <laughs> Thanks. Um, I like to, to humor her. She, she likes to go back into my office and type out a few things. You know what's funny? Some people actually think that she's off there writing my own scripts. I thought that was kind of funny when I heard that. <laughs> I would see her a lot of times just playing in her front yard by herself. She would just be riding her big wheel around the neighborhood, and I thought that kid could potentially go down the wrong path in a few years. And I'm glad to offer that to her, that someday she'll be a writer instead of a prostitute or a drug addict or something, you know. How's my next script coming, sweetie? Columbia Studios is waiting for it on Monday. I'm halfway done, but I'm really hungry. You know our deal. No food till you finish my script. Would everybody be here if I was ghost writing? If there was, woo, spooky ghost writing Nancy screenplays, like... My nose peeling because I was in the sun yesterday for about six and a half minutes and I really feel like it's it's not hot. Okay, sorry. Steven has made my life so much easier. Nancy um, came to this club one day, the club where I was working at. Steven, I love Steven. And I, I couldn't help but just run up to her and, and say, my God, you know, who are you? You're a famous actress, you're a movie star. And she said, no, I'm a, I'm a writer. I love Steven. The minute she said that, I just said, oh my God, I know that you're amazing. And I asked her if I could do, you know, anything for her at all. And she said, um, you can get me a Diet Coke. He's, he's my backbone. She's just the greatest woman most of the time. He's got the instincts of a hawk. Sometimes it's time to work. Sometimes it's time to buckle down, get things done, finish the scene, finish the script, put the martini down. He just saw something special in me, and he believed that I was going to be big. When she wrote the script, I, um, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> she said, I wrote this thing, and it's called The Sweetest Thing, and the first thing that came to my mind was that it was about me, and, um... He donated his time. He quit all of the jobs that he had. When I found out that it was about Tad, who I sort of thought was the sweetest thing too, um, I, I was a little bit hurt, but we've been over it. We had so many talks about it. It's great, it's, it's wonderful. I just think it's the perfect tale. <laughs> Nancy and I, we are so, 
super party clothes. She likes the glug glug, if you will. I love Kate. Kate is my super party soul sister. <laughs> I saw her and I was like, immediately struck with, okay, she likes to party. And so I said to her, I like to party. And, you know, we should get together sometime and party. She and I were actually waitressing together. And uh, we had both gotten fired from our waitressing jobs. I, I can remember not being able to pay my rent. And she just maintained a, a true friendship with me and hung in there and was such a great inspiration. And we fed off of each other and kept each other happy and told each other jokes. I found myself looking for myself in the film, like looking for myself and I couldn't find myself. And I was like, where am I? Where am I? And I couldn't find myself. I think she's fabulous, but Sometimes I need her to go home. We just like to hang out and have a good time and toss back a few teenies. Dad, you should come out with us tonight. You know, we like to look at nice looking men. It was like making out with my grandmother. Remember those days? Oh my God, my grandma's such a good kisser. Kate takes me a little off track sometimes. If Nancy were a remote control car, say she was like one of those little Jeeps, then I might have a little button thing, but I'm sure I, I have that influence on her. I wouldn't say, you know, go faster or slower, but I might say turn left. Yeah, it's typical, typical girls go, you know, go out. We go out a lot. Nancy will, like, walk in the door first, and then it's usually uh, I'm to her left, and Desi's to the right. So we form sort of a, a, a super party soul sister triptych. You know, we probably will have like 30, 80 cocktails in that night, and she makes sure that Kate and I eat. Desi is awesome, and she's a really good cook. She makes like this wicked um, turkey Diablo. It's good. It's totally spicy and hot, but it's also tender and juicy. Desi makes sure that we have a large glass of water and a couple of aspirin. It's miraculous because we wake up the next day and we're never hung over. Dick Stone Enterprise. I don't particularly like Dick. When I first became a writer, I was blessed with having every agent in town coming after me. Obviously my reputation did precede me and so she came at me full force and said you know this is who I want to be with. Somebody gave me a really good piece of advice and they said Dick Stone has no other clients and so you'll never get lost at his agency. I was you know a little taken aback at first and then I said I think this kid's got something. The sweetest thing yes yes. You have to create a certain amount of buzz and you know that's the way this town works, and I have the sweetest thing, and I'm like, man, this thing has got to, it's got to do something. We're talking from now on above the titles. This is it. This is the one. I'm not lying to you. I put the 48-hour lockdown on. I said, you guys have this weekend to read it, that's it. I take bids on Monday, and if I don't have anything on Monday, you guys are out of the game. I think it helped that I had partied one night with the president of Columbia. All right, we got another minute and a half because I got to jump. He's always on the phone. He's always making these agent deals and whatever. And like, Dick, who do you represent? Like, Nancy. Bronte, Jane Austen, noble writers, definitely. But Nancy P, come on. Dick Stone kind of repulses me, actually. She dreams for a living. And I make a living off her dreams. <sighs> Sweetest thing? It's nothing. This is gonna be huge. It's gonna be much better. All right, I'll give you a little taste. Tad by the pool. Brilliant, right? Nancy P, don't forget. You got 48 hours. Ciao. You're doing great. It's beautiful. I definitely think she has a thing for Tad. I'm truly blessed. I get to clean Nancy P's pool. Tad's like the most wonderful aquatic technician. Tad has an awesome body. My, po uh, my pool say, boy? The pool boy is here four days a week. It, Nobody's pool is that dirty. It's a, it's a big pool. He's just like one of those things that's there to be admired and um, sometimes touched. Like you would um, a flower 
you know, or a bottle of champagne. She dumps things in her pool. I've seen her do it. Do you want to talk about my maid, too? This is, seems kind of... She has a lot of friends, and she likes to be... Uh, she's a very social girl. And having a pool and being social equates to a lot of activity in the water. They like to hang out, and they keep me company when I, when I clean the pool. Steven puts sunscreen on me whenever he feels like I'm getting a little too burnt. There's not too many guys who are going to be comfortable with rubbing sunscreen on another guy's ass, which is, like, I think is the coolest thing ever. Kate... Spends a lot of time taking naps poolside. He's such a, an intellectual human being, and I just think that that's wonderful to be around. I would have to say Tad's the love of her life. What did he say? <laughs> like my dad always said, you should never dip your pen in the company ink. All right, I'm Ron. He and I uh, went to high school together. Uh, Nancy P is a super, super lady. Super lady, we go a long way back. Just a weird coincidence. I, I, my, I sold the screenplay. My name started being all over the, the trades and in the press and things like that. And I, out of the blue, I got a, a phone call from him. When I lost touch with Nancy, I, I always had this idea in the back of my head, like, where's Nancy? And how can I find Nancy? And, and if I did find Nancy, what would I do with Nancy? And he, he said, hey, remember me? Your buddy from high school. And We lost touch for a little while, but we hooked back up. And it's been like old times ever since. He's he he's just stuck. He's he's stuck like a like a fly to a windshield. That that's my high school buddy. <laughs> Nancy, it's Rod. Na Nancy, is that you? <laughs> it's me, Rod. Oh hey, what's going on? I just came by just to see what was happening. Wow, you know what? I, I'm kind of busy right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a call next week, okay? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt, you're my favorite person to talk to on the phone. Let's just get this door open, though. It's crazy. It's... I keep pulling on it, but nothing's happening. I don't know if it's locked or jammed. Oh, I don't know. That's so weird. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna... I'll give my handyman a call, and we could check it out. Maybe it's jam stuck. Yeah, totally cool. It's just that the door won't open. I've been coming through here for the past two weeks, and it's always been fine. All of a sudden, it's stuck. Did somebody accidentally lock it or something? I am both president and founder of the Nancy Pimentel Fan Club. I think I've gotten a few emails from her. Uh, there are uh, two, two humans, um, and then uh, my cat is uh, um, the secretary treasurer. I've never met her before. We also have a website, uh, I love Nancy Pimentel as a writer.org. Seems sweet. I'll get up in the morning, um, I'll check the internet, I'll do a search for Nancy Pimentel and um, see if anything new has been posted about her. And if it has, I will take that information and put it on the website. And then I will print it out and cut it out to be put in my scrapbook. I've never actually been successful in calling her house before. Um, I try a series of different numbers every day in the hopes that one of them will be Nancy Pimentel's house. And so far it has not been. Hi, uh, is Nancy there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, no, sir, I would not like to. Thank you. Some people call me a stalker. Um, technically, I'm not, though. Nothing has been filed against me. I'm just a fan. I don't want to hurt her, but I, I would, I guess, because I love her so much. I decided to be a writer, and I sent her a screenplay called A Very Sweet Thing. And, um, it was a very similar story, which I was very excited to see. No, no, I... It's amazing how similar the characters are to the characters in my, in my screenplay. A very sweet thing. Being centered, being balanced, being spiritual is, is absolutely essential. I sort of look at my life as kind of like a pie almost, like with maybe six different slivers of that pie. Nancy has a big pie to offer. Each sliver cannot be smaller or larger than the other sliver. I don't think that there's ever going to be not enough pie to go around. It has to be just as strong as work, just as strong as play, and just as strong as friends and family. That Those are all equally as strong. She's got a big pie. <laughs> I am the crust of Nancy's pie. 
And Stephen, Stephen is the filling. I'm so super touched that she said that. He's like the blueberry or rhubarb or whatever. Spirituality and being centered is an essential part of my life, and I think it enhances the other slivers. I'm Sasha, you know, like... As I keep adding my people to my life, uh, Sasha was brought in to help me because I was finding it difficult to, to hold on to that center. She was a wounded flower when I met her, and I think I've made her into a beautiful flower, the sweetest flower. I'm such a workhorse, and I was finding that the, the work part of me was overshadowing everything else. See this? It's fern, fern therapy. So I brought Sasha in. I caressed her face and her third eye, which was very dormant, before I met her. And when she's in with me in the morning, I tap. and you expel it out, and that opens her up so she can do her writing in the morning. I am the sweetest thing. <laughs> totally pro bono, but I can charge Edward from $50 to $5,000 for some cases. I mean, it depends. If you need me to clean the house, cleanse the house, I have to put special ferns all over, I have to go and get things blessed by my Dolly. When all's said and done and the day's over and that little girl's out the fucking door, all the people that truly love her come together and we sort of have like a moment. I mean, sometimes it could be breathing, sometimes it's just in front of the fireplace, which is my favorite. Hmm, another great day. It's so good to be up. It's almost like camping out. You want to roll up a sleeping bag and, and get your little head nestled up on some grass and just be one with, with nature, even though it's in the house. After the success of The Sweetest Thing... Did see it. I was high. Which I'm sure will bring her probably thousands of dollars. I see her moving on, maybe writing something bigger. She wants her own show, she can have her own show. Another Snow Dogs or something like that. If she wants to do a movie, she can definitely direct her own movie. I think Nancy has, has Snow Dogs too in her. I can see that. She is that good. I would like to see Nancy eventually dominate the movie world. She's a fabulous lady, and she can party hard. Dude, I'm so hungover. <laughs> She's got a great ass. I mean, there's no way of getting around it. She's, <laughs> she's got a great ass. What is Nancy P to everyone else? I think I'm an inspiration, a good lover. <laughs> Not to everybody, a good speller. If people have trouble spelling, I want them to come to me. It helped Greg open the Columbia door a little bit better. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Back again. <laughs> She's got a great ass. Yeah, that's a major asset. <laughs> All right, we're back. Nice. So you're completely the crust of her pie? I'm encrusting Nancy. <laughs> that, I think someone's just pulling your leg. That's, that's, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, that, that's Nancy P. I mean, come on, I'm just a pool boy. I'm in a lab tech, I mean, I'm in a pool technique. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just a, I'm just a, an, a quad. Thank you. I'm I don't particularly like dick. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Do you not like dick's taste? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we had a nice long call. Oh, that's nice. <laughs>